finding third ways to the fourth world. Um, and so when you the, the fourth world is a is some, something that uh, reoccurs and keeps coming up again again and again in this in, in Professor Hall's works and in his his various articles and polemics that he's disseminated and in his many voluminous peer review publications he's had throughout his career. And so uh, this notion of the, the fourth world, uh, I, I think it's necessary that I sort of leave that to the, the viewer's own um, curiosity for now. And I'll do another YouTube where I just define the fourth world. Also, I think another one I'll have to do is the bowl with one spoon. That's the kind of rubric underneath, uh, overarching this this project. The rubric of this project, uh, the bowl with one spoon. Bowl with one spoon. Um, and, and I'll do another YouTube where I define the bowl with one spoon. And so, uh, Professor Hall dissects his uh, his uh, chapter into five um, uh, neat and and concise. Um, <clears throat> uh, sections and so so uh, part one is called capitalism, communism, racism, social democracy, and trade unionism. Um, section two is called from progressivism progressivism to fascism on the contested frontiers of the empire of private property. Part three is uh, wars on Indians, Slavs, Jews, communists, and truth in the genesis of the military industrial complex. It's very interesting if you think about that title. Wars on Indians, Slavs, Jews, Communists, and the truth in the genesis of the military-industrial complex. So there we have that phrase, the military-industrial complex, uh, you know, where industry and militarism meet, and, and, and then the implications of which we, we see today, of course, and have seen in recent history. So section four of, the, of this fine chapter is uh, Hitler or Roosevelt, question mark. Hitler or Roosevelt? Uh, who would you prefer? Uh, or neither? Or both? Or, you know, these, uh, these uh, questions are contemplated and um, <clears throat> no guesses uh, who Professor Hall um, denounces and who he, he lends, um, he, he, he views more favourably in his the historical light. Um, not, not, not many guesses there. <clears throat> um, and and the, 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 the final um, uh, section of this um, this, this chapter, the chapter called Hitler or Roosevelt, finding the ways to the fourth world. The final section of this is called from the, war, from the Wars on Communists to the War on Terror. From the Wars on Communists to the War on Terror. Now that's an interesting uh, aspect and an interesting theme that kind of courses throughout Professor Hall's book. Um, this, um, when the Cold War ended, we kind of had this opportunity as humanity to kind of uh, contemplate a new world, one that isn't decided by two superpowers vying for power in the world and the, the threat of mutually assured destruction. Um, we had an opportunity as humanity to kind of perhaps embrace international law, embrace our universality, embrace, um, you know, the possibility for peace in the world, you know, uh, as idealists would say, you know, that is possible to have peace in the world. Um, but yet we've ended up in this uh, quagmire called the global war on terror, this global war on terror. It's a real um, uh, bane on humanity, on this benighted planet of ours. And if we're going to overcome this, we need to understand it. And Professor, and they're very difficult issues. And of course, in the acad academy and in politics and in journalism, it's not very expedient to talk about these issues, to critique those in power, to critique the war profiteers, the organized gangsters who go around the world waging war for profits, for resources, for oil, for gas. It's, it's not very uh, expedient to do that. And Professor Hall has taken some hard hits as a result of this. And I think um, if you're look, watching this, I really think you owe it to yourself to, to pat this uh, fine humanitarian on the back by purchasing his book, which is coming out in the fall, published by McGill Queen's University Press. And, uh, and so anyway, I'd very much like to just kind of uh, do my best to um, <coughs> sort of regurgitate the chapter that I've, I've uh, been avidly reading, voraciously reading for the last uh, few uh, days and, and weeks and this particular chapter which is of, of great interest to me. And so I will uh, go through each section uh, one by one. I think that would be useful but in particular I'd like to emphasize the middle, uh, the middle chapters which I informed you, uh, the middle uh, sort of uh, sub-theses within this broader chapter. Um, and that's, uh, so from progressivism 
to fascism on the contested frontiers of the empire of private property, and then wars on Indians, Slavs, Jews, communists, and truths in the genesis of the military industrial complex. And so Professor Hall introduces this chapter. The, the first section is capitalism, communism, racism, social democracy, and trade unionism. So he gives the, you know, this is a grand narrative he talks about, starts roughly around the, the Russian Revolution in 1917, uh, how, how this changed the planet, how it um, threatened the, the capitalist system, it offered a, an alternative system, a different system. And of course, uh, not long after 1917, uh, you had the, the Great Depression, and capitalism wasn't all that, wasn't a bed of roses uh, in the decade immediately after 1917, say from 1917 to 1927. That's why you saw, for example, the, the courageous uh, move in the Bavarian Republic, where Marxist revolutionaries uh, declared independence in the Bavarian Republic. And so you kind of had a situation where throughout the capitalist world, there was a kind of crisis. Um, and this crisis was engendered really by Marx and Engels' work, which 1848, the Communist Manifesto and so on. And so you had this crisis in the capitalist world, which forced capitalists to, and you know their political spokes, uh, spokesmen and women uh, to uh, some women uh, to, uh, to to contemplate how to uh, how to sort of um, placate and pacify um, the the increasing class consciousness. How could they kind of engender false consciousness, or how could they um, crush the the rising tide of uh, trade unionism and, and progressivism? Of all, of all sorts, Marxist revolution being the ultimate fear of the bourgeoisie. They, you know, if they'd acquired, they transferred earth into property, they didn't do it to hand it over to the masses, they did it to, to, to control and to, to use to profit, their, their, to, to profit from and to expand their lucrative uh, exploits to profit the minority over <clears throat> the majority. And so the, uh, the Russian revolution um, effectively created a situation where the capitalist world had to become introspective and look at itself and what uh, academics within, the, I hate to use the word Western, but you know, because of course Russia's, into, you know, Western and Eastern and, you know, Cuba's Western because it's in the Western Hemisphere. So I don't like to use the word Western, I think it's a, it's a kind of outmoded, outdated uh, cliche that I, I, I kind of reject along with the word America. What do we, you know, when people say America, it's frightfully arrogant I think. America's a hemisphere, it's not a country. It's not a country. This is arrogance the a country called itself the United States of America. And therefore it's talking, you know, talking uh, on behalf of people in Argentina who are also Americans. Cubans are Americans. I'm a, you know I'm becoming a Canadian. I'm a I'm an American. Uh, you know, so so this is and that's Professor Hall's uh, you know the American Empire and the and the fourth world. He's he's talking about America generically as a hemisphere, in hemispherically, um, and so, you know, uh, so that's an important thing, but I'm, I'm going off topic as usual, and so, um, so this uh, Russian Revolution, this is where Professor Hall introduces the chapter with the Russian Revolution, and um, the kind of uh, introspection that's engendered from that, and so it's a very interesting time in political and uh, intellectual discourse, you have John Maynard Keynes emerge, who, who, who invents kind of Keynesian economics to kind of save uh, capitalism from communism, but to save it in a way where, it, where you kind of take the rough edges of capitalism and you make it capitalism with a human face, uh, as one person, as one man once said, capitalism with a human face. And so the way he suggested doing this was basically in times of economic boom, you tax the rich and then you sort of keep that money. So in times of economic decline, because capitalism's like the ocean, it has tidal waves and it <clears throat> it rises and falls. It has booms and busts, and um, so uh, so the the result of this Russian Revolution, of course, is uh, uh, different governments had to perspective and had to reflect upon how they were going to maintain their hegemony and maintain capitalism uh, and sort of uh, protect it from revolution. There was different ways of going about this, and different countries went about it in different ways. Hence, the the dichotomy between. Uh, Roosevelt and Hitler, the Hitlerian model of capitalism, um, and the the Rooseveltian model of capitalism, the the um, kind of social democratic path and the fascist path. Uh, you know, Mussolini said, "Well, fascism. You could also say corporatism, the kind of corporatist, the kind of German military-industrial complex, which emerged and w with the collaboration."